Uh, yeah, actually, good morning, I think. Um, thank you, Terry, for organizing this. I know all the great hair that you have came just from the last three months. Um, thank you for including me. Um, I am an educator and a business mentor, and I'm working with companies like Delacroix Development. We have Marie here today. Um, and I work with uh, companies like uh, an artist group called Bike the Biscuit. They do business mentoring, bring kind of the business into art. Um, and I work as a trainer for several uh, 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 subjects with the different clients. Um, and what I learned in all these years was that people have learned skills, which, we, we, as, we call, uh, as Aline already said, we are very focused on academics. So if you are a parent, you want your child to go to college. But we also have, we forget the natural skills that we have. And if you look at people like Richard Branson, who I think is a poster boy for an entrepreneur, he left school at 16, and his first business idea was growing Christmas trees and selling them. It failed. But the next business that he had was a magazine called Student that had kind of a, a, a quite decent success. But he was, he's a serial ent entrepreneur, and he's still, he's 71 years old now, mm -hmm. he still opens up new businesses, still develops new businesses, and so on. And he had no formal education other than the 10 years that you have when you go to primary and secondary school. So, but what he has were, are actually natural skills. So he's dys uh, dyslexic, so he can't spell properly, and he is uh, 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 diagnosed with HDHD. So it's one of these things that you kind of consider you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. And look, he owns his own island, and I think he's one of the, if not the richest men on the planet, so I really have to meet him. Anyhow, so what are natural uh, uh, entrepreneurial skills? And this is something that you can't teach in college or in university. It's attitude, it's logic, mm. it's uh, uh, the, the thinking, uh, the way you think. So in, if I have a sister who's just a year younger, and if you compare the two of us, we have completely different ways of thinking. She, when she goes from A to D, she always goes A, B, C, D, and I see how can I go from A to D straight away. So we have completely different ways of thinking. Then, how focused are people? And I have worked with a lovely lady who opened up a cafe, and she asked me for kind of uh, mentoring. And when I met her, I said, oh, God, no, that's, that's not going to work. And I tried very hard to explain to her that the first year is the hardest. To survive the first year is the hardest. If you're not hardworking, if you're not focused, you will fail. 90% of people fail because they're not focused, they're not hardworking, and they don't really uh, think about the business as a whole. She had to close after four months, unfortunately, because she couldn't figure out why. Um, and I tried to talk, and she still thought, she went from uh, employment into uh, um, the cafe business. First, she never worked in a cafe, which was obviously the worst thing you can do. I, I hate the sentence, I always wanted to open up a cafe. And we have East Cafe here today, and if you had, are still here tomorrow, because I think you, op you close at five, don't you? The cafe closes at five? Sorry? Your cafe closes at five, doesn't no, it? No, at nine. At nine. Please go over to, to on the other side of the river, uh, to East Cafe, you will get absolutely delicious home-cooked Middle Eastern food. I lived in Turkey, and it feels like a second home again, so <laughs> thank you for opening it. Um, so, but when you see what these two, but, uh, uh, um, and I don't, sorry, I don't know your name, but he and his wife really are hardworking. They are focused. They look what the customers need, and they give it to them. And it's, both of them have all of these skills, which, they, which you can't teach in, in, in college. So if you have imagination, and if you have an idea, this is already the first part of imagination, but how do you kind of take this imagination into your business? And this is where then uh, uh, companies like Cop City Partnership comes in, and the rural development come in, who have kind of the visibility studies and so on. Uh, but from, this is not all. So if you have the idea, if you have none of the other skills, you will have problems. You will absolutely have problems. And this is what I think needs to be included. I had the big pleasure, and, and uh, uh, I was educated in Germany. My mom is German, my dad is English, and my mom insisted that all her kids are educated in Germany. She didn't trust the English school system. <laughs> I'm still grateful for that, because I was able to uh, study business without any debts afterwards. So I was really lucky to have this. 
But what as Alina said as well, and I think Bernford as well, is that a, when I went through primary school, focus was really set on individual thinking. So we were encouraged to write a lot, to put our thoughts down on paper, not just dictating and writing it down what we were told, but really thinking for ourselves and putting down our ideas. And this is something that I think has been lost, especially in primary school. Uh, when I see my, my husband has grandchildren, when I see what they learn, I said, seriously, please do something else. And when I look at my English cousin who has just left school, um, I have to read out loud what she writes when she texts. I have to read it out loud to understand what she actually meant because her spelling is atrocious, absolutely atrocious. So this is things that we need to kind of really focus on, when people, especially when children are in school. I believe that if you try to teach these or um, encourage these skills in secondary or even third level education, it's too late. I think it really should start at, at primary school level. Can we do the next one? So, but then obviously, um, why do businesses fail? And I actually did a lot of research on that. Uh, one of three businesses fails within the first year. Um, and this simply is um, based on people not understanding the business world. So if you start, to, I, when I started my business, uh, uh, I actually started completely different. I actually started a food uh, uh, event management company in 2014. And because I wanted to educate people about food. Uh, uh, I, I thought it was horrible that people didn't know where their food comes from and so on and so on. So my focus actually and my expertise is actually food. Um, and over the years, this kind of, this part of the business got more and more in the background and education came more and more in the foreground because people ask me, how do you do this, what do you do here and so on. And I think one reason I'm still in business is that I adapted. Because I work, at the start I worked for food events with uh, companies like Tyndall and Port of Cork and so on. And because when they welcome visitors from abroad, I took them around Cork and, and I showed them what wonderful food we have here. And we organized trips and so on. But smaller producers then asked me, oh, you did this and this, how do you did this? So I got more and more into education and I noticed that I love education. I love to, to share my expertise and my knowledge. So in, when I'm looking at uh, businesses, the problem really is that people cannot adapt easily. They, they have this one idea and they stick to this one idea. So for example, if you have one product, one product will not sustain you for more than three years because people want something more. So if you rely on one product, you're gone unless it fills a niche that nobody else kind of uh, does, you know. But apart from that, you have to innovate, you have to develop, you have to grow. Otherwise, your business is not sustainable, and we talked a lot about sustainability, and this is really something where people focus too much on just one thing. Then lack of skills, and this is really something uh, um, that I, I lived in several countries. Turkey is one of them. My Turkish was okayish. I was able to say hello and goodbye, and I was able to go shopping. <laughs> But, uh, and I can still read recipes and crochet instructions, but I can't have a whole conversation anymore. But what I noticed was when uh, my best friend is Turkish, so obviously I learned a lot through her, but when I lived in Turkey, the language was completely different from what I learned in, while I was still in Germany. Um, living a language is more important than learning the language. So for example, if we have immigrants coming here to Ireland, we need to include them in our daily life to actually uh, let them feel the language because the country is made out of language and especially in Ireland uh, and I was very lucky as I said my dad is English and the sense of humor is quite similar I was lucky enough to be included straight away because I didn't have the language skill gaps that so many people have so Irish people are known to crack jokes and if you don't understand them it can lead to kind of mis uh, misunderstandings and so on but also, if I've, Richard Branson is supposed to have said, and I don't, he might be very surprised what uh, uh, all the quotes associated with him, but <laughs> apparently he said once uh, that if somebody gives you a great opportunity and you don't know how to do it, say yes and figure it out afterwards. And I'm actually a big believer of that. I'm a big believer of that. If somebody said to me, uh, somebody said to me once, can you give a uh, class in Excel? Sure, I can. 
and now I teach accountants in Excel, just to let you know. You know? So it's, uh, and my math skills in school were really bad, you know, but I figured out how to do it afterwards. I knew Excel from working as a data analyst, but I never taught it, and now I teach accountants, and they're quite impressed, if you say so, you know. So, but I learned that very quickly and so on. So I'm the big believer of, uh, uh, if you don't know how to do something, figure it out, or find the answer somewhere. You don't, you don't have to know all the answers, you have to know where to find them. This is actually quite also. And then obviously, uh, uh, some people are not aware what support systems are in place, especially early school leavers. You know, they, uh, 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 they kind of half gave up already. You know, they had difficulties uh, uh, going up. They're coming from different, uh, from, from difficult family backgrounds and so on. They might not be aware of it. Immigrants again, you know, refugees. I mean, they're kind of stuck away somewhere. And I have met people who, uh, 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 and this is, I work in a big computer company, uh, uh, and I went to the canteen one day, and there was a lovely lady behind the counter serving me the food and we started chatting and she was from an African country and I, I unfortunately forgot which one it was, but she was a doctor. <coughs> she was a doctor. She had to uh, leave her country because it was war torn, torn and she came to Ireland for safety and she had to work as a, as a food server because her qualification, she worked 10 years as a doctor, she studied 10 years to become a doctor, so she had 20 years experience but she was not allowed to work here as a doctor. So if you look into the, the immigrants and the, the refugees, there is so much talent and so much skill available that we really need to bring out, especially if we want our region to grow, this helps us grow as well, you know? So we, may, we have to really advertise the support that is available. So I was, for example, not aware that the Cork Partnership, Cork City Partnership is actually doing very similar work to better her development, you know? So I wasn't aware of that. So. Uh, so that's, I'm grateful that I'm here now today to see actually all, this, uh, all the talent that is out there and all the support that is out there. But we need to really advertise it more. We have to really go into the groups that need it most. We can't wait for them to come to us. I think we need to go to them. So, uh, the teachable skills. And this is really where I always say uh, uh, focus needs to be on. Um, I, when I left Germany, uh, uh, so I finished my education and everything and I moved around a lot. But when I left, there was a, uh, the mobile phones just came in and uh, uh, the texting started. And I remember one minister, I can't remember if it was in England or in Germany now, I don't want to say, but they were thinking of actually adding the texting style to uh, uh, the, the, the writing skills. So if you wanted to write your exams in text <laughs> form, you could do it, but it had to be in a certain form. I said, who does that? Why, you know? But read and write. And these are really, really basic skills. When I went to primary school, I'm very old, by the way. When I, when I went to primary school, uh, um, the alphabet was, was taught. So I had A, B, C, D, E. When my brother, who is 10 years younger than me, went to school, he was taught words. And if you see my brother and me, I spell very well in English and in German. My brother doesn't, because, for example, there's a word in German that has the same letters, just in a different order. He can't differentiate them. So how to learn read and write is very, very important. And I know changing a curriculum is very, very difficult, but we really need to kind of see, especially first grade and second grade, really has to be important to get the basics right for spelling and understanding how to read and write. Um, as I said, my husband's granddaughter, she is 11. And she is now, I think, is it fourth or fifth year in, in, in primary school? When I was in that age, when I was 11, I wrote a story for the school paper, which was very funny, which kind of gave me an A, uh, a plus in, 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 in writing, but also a, th a therapy session with a school therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote kind of, um, it was a crime story, so I had a couple of bodies in there, and people thought at 11 I shouldn't have done that, but anyhow. But I was able to do this. I was able to structure a story at 11, I was able to spell, and my grammar was correct at the age of 11. And today, 11 year old cannot do that. They cannot write down a story like this. They cannot put something in a timely order. Uh, 
And this is what is missing. The curriculum really needs to be changed very early on in primary school. Secondary school is too late. Then math. I hate math. Absolutely hate it. Um, I still, if somebody comes to me and says, give me an eighth of this, I said, no, 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 give it to me in any other number. I hate fractions. Um, but I, I know that. So I have an accountant. <laughs> And we have a deal, I teach him Excel and he teaches me, he does my books. I will not ever, ever go into bookkeeping. Uh, it's boring. When I have to put all my uh, expenses together, uh, it takes me a whole day and I absolutely hate it. He is very happy because I do it all in Excel, but uh, um, it's really something. But as you said earlier on, people do not like to talk about taxes. They don't like to talk about revenue. But if you don't get this right, your business suffers badly, you know, so again, if you don't know how to do it, find somebody to help you. So this is, again, we need to tell people that just because you don't know it doesn't mean you're stupid or you fail. Find, find a partner. Then the technical know-how. So, for example, I always say, as I said, say yes and figure it out afterwards. If somebody will ever ask me to create a vaccine to cure stupidity, I would say, no, thank you, because I don't have the know-how to ever do any medical stuff, you know? So, but it's, um, I know my, my limits. I know my limits very well. Uh, but most people don't. And it's funny, and, and I think, uh, um, I don't know if it, if it was uh, Nile who said it, but there are, you know, Alina, lots of women come back into the workforce after having taken a baby break, as they call it. And I gave a workshop once on how to write a CV and conduct an interview, or to go into an interview. and. The women were there, and it was the same question all the time, saying, yeah, but you know, I didn't work the last five years. I said, what did you do? Oh, I looked at him, I said, no. I said, you worked. You have medical experience now. You have diary, diary, uh, diary management. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, travel arrangements, and so on and so on. These are skills that you can actually apply to whatever you're going to do. And I said, do not ever say to the break, because nobody really not, doesn't work. You either bring up your children, which Karen says grandchildren have a more exciting social life than I have, so <laughs> they really have, there's really a lot of uh, uh, organization behind that. But it's, um, we kind of, what I notice is that we underestimate ourselves. That we underestimate ourselves rather than overestimate. And this is where I always say is, <coughs> if you have an idea, you say, oh, I, I, I don't know. Go to people like Tony and go to people like uh, uh, Development who can actually talk you through and actually give you really the idea what you need. Then sales skills, and I cannot sell. I could not sell a heating system to an Eskimo <laughs> or a fridge into the Sahara, I could not. But there are people out there who really, really are great at it. And if you are pleased and you have an idea, please do it because it's brilliant. I could not do this. But it's a skill that can be taught because there are kind of wordings and there are kind of attitude uh, uh, things that can be taught actually. Um, and it's, but if you don't have sales skills, so I could not go out and sell a service or sell a product because I could not. It's, it's just one of the things that I know I can't. And then, and this is where I always, and these are kind of more important really, the cultural dif differences. Um, I have a great sense of humor, at least I, I'm told I have, um, and people don't believe that I have actually German background, but we learned not today that you have a very great sense of humor, thank you. <laughs> but it's uh, uh, one of the things, when I came to Ireland uh, uh, and people started making jokes, I understood them because English is my second language. Um, it, so I didn't have any cultural problems here. I didn't have them in, in, in England either, but I had them in Turkey. Because I moved to Turkey in the 80s. <laughs> I'm being old, as I said. <laughs> and it's, um, women behaved differently back then. You know, so uh, um, I was not, a, I, I was brought up, you can, t you can speak your mind. In Turkey, I had to learn to be rather polite about it, you know. <laughs> but I was lucky again that I lived with a Turkish family who taught me all this. So I didn't have to find people to talk to. I f they found me, and I was really included in the whole community that we was there. And I ate my weight in watermelons, by the way, because everybody bought me watermelons for some reason. But I had things. But when doing business, 
these cultural differences really, really make a big, big, uh, have a big impact if we don't understand them. And we need to include people, especially if they come from a different background, if they come from abroad, if they make a, a new life here, we need to include them to show them that it's okay to be different, that we just need to understand each other. And then best practice, networking, and time management, obviously, are really, really big, big factors. Um, if I, uh, my sister, for example, it takes, uh, she can't concentrate, she can't focus. So what takes me 10 minutes will take you half an hour. So these, again, if you have problems with time management, get tools. They are really, really big uh, tools. If you work too hard, you will actually burn out. Networking and Ireland is a great place to network. It's a wonderful place to network. We have Network Ireland for women. We have the, 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 the chambers, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. But there are also lots of groups around, kind of little small business groups. I work with the Vlami Chamber. And this is a great place to, to kind of get to know people and so on and so on. And best practice, always make sure you adhere to them because you need to be trusted when you have a business. So this is the difference between teachable skills, which we should include in primary school level, I believe, and apart from the sales skills, not really, but uh, the natural skills should be kind of developed as well and should be broadcasted and should be encouraged when you are in primary school and secondary school. So thank you so much. Oh yeah, so if you know where the answer is, you have the ETB, you have the Cockpark City Partnership, you have federal development, you have uh, online classes, and there are really lots out there now at the moment, and you have Enterprise Ireland and local enterprise offices as well. So, and the business chambers, please, if you are, even rural places have a business chambers, it's a great place to network. Thank you so much.